Welcome to the Private Accommodation Checklist Quiz, where our contestants today are Tamsin and Sophie. So today I'm quizzing you to see if you successfully followed UAL's Private Accommodation Checklist, which are 10 points you should always follow. Confident you're going to score well? Mm -hmm. mm, maybe. Average. Average. Maybe just above. <laughs> right, well, let's find out and kick off with question one. Did you arrange a budget when you started house hunting? Yes. Yeah. Well done, one point to you. Yes. <laughs> one point. Yes, everyone needs to plan how much they can afford so you don't end up with a place which is too expensive for you. Now on to question two. Did you view more than one place before choosing your house? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yay. <laughs> well done again both. That's right. Always make sure you view more than one place. Then you'll have a good idea of what you can get for your budget. We recommend that you view at least two or three similar properties before making any decision or signing a contract. Next is question number three. Did you use an agent? And did you check if your agent was a member of a redress scheme? Mm -hmm. We used an agent, but we didn't check. <laughs> oh no, you missed a point there. I think we should have checked. <laughs> Agents need to be a member of the Property Ombudsman or Property Redress Scheme. The agents need to display the logos on their web page or their shop windows, so look out for those. Always check this so you have someone to complain to if the agent messes up. Now, let's see if you can redeem yourselves. Question 4. Did you view the place beforehand? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well done! Yes! Before paying any money or signing any contract, always make sure you have viewed the exact property yourself. Right, so, question five. Did you read your contract fully and understand your responsibilities? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. But we have a follow-up question just to challenge you. Did you ask our private accommodation advisor to read your contract? No. <laughs> No, too bad, Sophie and Tamsin. You lost that point, and you also lost the opportunity to utilize the free and reassuring services of our experts. They can read the contract for you and check all the legal terminology that may be a bit confusing. Anyway, question seven. Did you do a detailed inventory? Yes. yes. <laughs> Correct. Well done because everyone should fill out their inventory in as much detail as possible. This protects you from being asked to pay for any damage that was there before you moved in. Now for question eight. Did you check that your deposit is protected? No. No. Ah, oh, well, no point there then. In England, there are three different schemes your landlord can be under. The DPS, the TDS, and My Deposits. Remember to ask which scheme your landlord uses and then keep an eye out for the confirmation that your deposit has been processed. Okay, question nine is a true or false. Subletting is legal. False. False. Yes. Yeah. Finally. Yes, well done both. Landlords do not allow subletting. And remember that subletting makes you a landlord. The only solution to end your tenancy is to find someone to take your place on the contract. So now it's time for our final question. <laughs> Did you ever pay rent to your flatmate rather than your landlord or agency directly? No. <laughs> Good, you got that right. Always avoid paying rent to a flatmate and relying on them to forward this on to your landlord. If they forget, lose it, or are late in making the payment, you are still the one responsible and will be in breach of your contract. Well, thank you both for taking part. I hate to break this to you, but you sadly only got six out of ten. Oh, Do you actually? That's so bad. That's so bad. That's pretty bad. <laughs> mm, yes, well, I'm sure you'll be better next time you find a place to rent. We'll, we'll I think it's rigged. <gasps> Bye for now. Bye.